ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I bear witness there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and Allah alone and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the slave and the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear respected brothers, today we live in a time that hardship and tribulations is facing the Muslim ummah from everywhere. And the only remedy for us is returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, with ikhlas, and to return back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because after the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, the best blessings that Allah sent to us is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nothing but as a mercy to all mankind. So brothers, we have to hold to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this life as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the authentic hadith أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ السِّتِّينَ وَالسَّبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مَنْ يَتَجَاوَزُ ذَلِكَ The ages, the average age of my ummah is between 60 and 70 and some of them or a few of them Maybe he will live 80 years, 90 years. Then we hear in the news that kids, when the angel of death he received the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take any soul, he will never delay the commands of Allah one second. If we know this as a fact, that one day we will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we need to do our part by knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the topic of my khutbah, brothers, that we need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the question to myself and to you, do we truly know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we truly know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah sent his messengers, revealed his books, so he wants to show the mankind the way that will be please him, how to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance to you and the best thing that will direct you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many Muslims nowadays they deserted the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Even if they read it, they don't understand it. And sometimes we understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran, but we leave the action. And before I continue with knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want everybody to know, including myself, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept any good deeds from us. We need two solid conditions that no Muslim should forget these two conditions 
for Allah to accept your good, good deeds. One of them, al-ikhlas, sincerity, doing things only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, following the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without these two conditions, whatever you do from the act of worship, Allah will reject it, except if you apply these two conditions, sincerity and following the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I mentioned, brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent the Qur'an, the holy book, for us to tell us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we go all along together, we open the first surah in the Qur'an. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. To the end of it, all of it. It tells you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then if you flip the pages of Al-Mus'haf al-Kareem, Al-Quran al-Kareem, and if you go to the last surah in the Quran, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ All the verses in this surah, it tells you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith, the greatest ayah, the greatest verse in the Qur'an, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Why it is the greatest ayah? Because all of it, it tells you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The surah that every Muslim memorized after surah al-Fatiha, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ the Prophet described this surah as this surah is one-third of the Qur'an. If you recite it, you get the reward as if you recited one-third of the Qur'an. Why this surah is very important? Because it gives you the description about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the only one deserved to be worshipped. He has no partner. And if you recite along the all ayat in the Qur'an, whether you recite the ayat about the prophets and the nations before us, and what's going to happen in the Day of Judgment, all of it, it's in a way, it tells you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He has the beautiful name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has severe punishment. He told us in the Qur'an, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ don't you see, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what Allah did to the people of the elephant, those who came uh, with the transgress, and they want to destroy the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them. Who's the one who saved the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? When we recite in the Quran, وَقُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ Allah tells the fire to be cool and still for his prophet and servant Ibrahim. So who is the one who saved the prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? Brothers in Islam, whenever you face hardship, whenever you get sad or angry, return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the one who parted the sea for prophet Musa alayhi salam. So Musa alayhi salam when Fir'aun and his army, they followed Musa and his followers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala parted the sea for Musa alayhi salam so he can walk to the safety. Then Allah makes the round to drown. So if you connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have so many examples in the Quran. It shows you that Allah, he has mercy for his true servant. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has severe punishment for those who transgress. And they were disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is the one who saved the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and turned the whole earth as a huge flood and make Nuh alayhi salam and the true believers to pass to the safety? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha Umm al Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anha wa ardaha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet sallam, and our mother. She said in the hadith by Imam al-Bukhari, 
كنت جالسة عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وإذا بخول بنت الأزور تدخل على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وتسار النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ساعة ثم تخرج وإذا بالقرآن ينزل Aisha she reported رضي الله عنها that she was sitting with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the woman named Khawla she entered and she talked with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in private and Aisha she said I can't hear anything then Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed سورة المجادلة قد سمع الله قول التي تجادلك في زوجها وتشتكي إلى الله والله يسمع تحاوركما الله سبحانه وتعالى revealed the ayat that he said O oh Muhammad Allah he hears the one she's debating with you O oh Muhammad and she's complaining to Allah about her husband mistreating her Aisha she was surprised she said I was sitting in the same room very close I can't hear anything and Allah from the above seventh heaven he heard that debate between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that woman. The lesson that we derive, brothers, from this ayah, that if we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, all seeing, we supposed to stay away from all kind of sinning, whether in private or whether in public, whether when we are alone with ourselves or whether we are in front of the sight of others. Because when we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, this is, will lead us to understand the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes. And this is, will it bring to us, to our hearts, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, all seeing, and despite of all this, we start to confront Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all kinds of sinning. This knowledge that you know that Allah is all hearing, all seeing, will be against you in the day of judgment. The day will be witness against you. Your action will be against you. The Quran will be against you if you were disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all these things will be witness, whether for you or whether with, against you. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يأتي القرآن شفيعا لأصحابه يوم القيامة ورب قارئ للقرآن والقرآن يلعنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said The Quran will intercede for those who work for those who do action after they memorize it and they understand it and on the other hand the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said maybe there is a reciter of the Quran and sometimes in these hadith, when they explain it, meaning the one who memorized the Qur'an, and the Qur'an will curse him in the day of judgment. Why? Because he takes the Qur'an, he recited, he understands it, but he do, do to, totally everything against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His blessings coming down to us day and night. And we confront Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with disobedience. Yes, we have shortcomings. Yes, we are a human being. But we need to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance. Whatever you do, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the only remedy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about him that Allah, he has 99 names, 100 less one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names. Whoever gathers these names and understands the meaning of it, Allah will let him enter Jannah, paradise. Inna lillahi tis'an wa tis'ina isman, mi'atan illa wahida, man ahsaha, دخل الجنة. The meaning of أحصاها gathered the name of Allah. It's not only to know that Allah الأحد الصمد الفرد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. Allah الرحمن الرحيم. It's very good to, to, to know these names. But it's better to understand the meaning of these names. 
What's the reflection of these names in your life, in your heart, in your family, in your society? This is the meaning that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants us to understand. To understand that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, as I mentioned earlier, all hearing. Imagine we have hearing and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He has hearing. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is hearing. It's totally different than our hearing. And I'm going to give you one example to understand Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is hearing what it is. If all the people on the face of earth, they make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each individual, he make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever he wants. The sick, he wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him speedy recovery. The one who's away from his homeland, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return him back. The father or the mother, they ask him dua for Allah to bless their children. Every, indiv every individual, he asks the own, his own dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his own language. All of this dua will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah can hear it in the same time. And Allah, he has the ability to grant each individual and to return and to answer his dua. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you truly know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So why brothers and sisters, if we have sisters here, I'm sorry, said, why we confront Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night with sinning, and then we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever we have. All of it is from Allah. Look at your eyes. Look at your hearing. Look at your health. Look at your family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to him, it's in matters less than a second. Kun fayakun. He can destroy all of us. But because he's all merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is patient. And no one is more patient than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes those true believers victorious. Now the Muslim ummah, they complaining a lot. What's happened to the Muslim? Why are defeated? The only answer it is that we disconnect ourselves from the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of you know Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. Once he was receiving a letter from Amr ibn al-Aq radiyallahu anhu. And he said in that letter, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, let us cross the ocean and spread Islam in the Roman Empire. And Umar radiallahu anh, when he received this letter, he sent another letter to Amr ibn al-As telling him, describe the ocean for me. Describe the ocean for me. Umar radiallahu anh, he, he was a Bedouin. He used to live in the desert. He doesn't understand what it is the ocean. The question is, who makes that symbol man victorious? Because he connected himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Muslim nowadays, we have power, we have wealth, technology, but why we are defeated? We are a huge in numbers because we left the Quran behind our back. We disconnect ourselves from the great guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted Quran for you. He accepted the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu for you. And he accepted Islam for us. Islam nowadays in the Muslim ummah only in the masjid. Outside of the masjid. Lying. Betraying the trust. Judging without referring back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by raising our hands to shower us with mercy and to make us victorious, anna yustajabu lakum. There will be no answer from Allah. And I'm going to conclude, brothers, with one example to make the khutbah short. The Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, in the battle of Uhud, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave a ruma the archery, the 50 men of the Sahaba, he gave them a clear command. Don't 
leave that mountain because you will protect our back. Whether you see us victorious and we win over the enemy of the Islam, or whether you see us defeated and even the birds eat from our flesh, don't eat, don't leave that mountain. It's a clear command. Then the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they are a human being like us. When they see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the rest of his companions were victorious and they defeated the kuffar, they left the mountain. Their leader Abdullah ibn Haram radiallahu anhu, he reminded them, don't you hear, didn't you hear what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? Don't leave that mountain, whatever happened. Some of them, they did not listen. Because some of them, they want this dunya. And some of them, they want al akhirah. And this is among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. What's the consequences of breaking the commands of the Prophet ﷺ? It's one command. The Muslims, were, they were defeated in that battle. So return back to ourselves, brothers, and see day and night, we are breaking the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us victorious. So brothers, please, return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance. May Allah guide all of us. May Allah make the Muslim ummah victorious. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and make us all with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfiru Allah al-azim li wa lakum. فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين استغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم رب جبرائيل وميكائيل وإسرافيل فاطر السماوات والأرض عالم الغيب والشهادة أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Dear brothers it was reported that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu once, during the Jumu'ah day, he went to the masjid early. In his way, he passed by the house of al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that day, al-Abbas radiyallahu anhu arda, he was at the roof of his house, slaughtering a little chicken, preparing it, for the lunch for his family. While Umar passing by, there is a drainage pipe that the Sahaba they used to put as uh, at the top of the building so if there's any water they want to clean the roof of the house, all the waters, all the dirty things will come through that drainage pipe. So while Al Abbas he was sacrificing that chicken, Umar radiallahu anhu passed by and when he washing with the water, the blood, all the blood and the water comes at the clothes of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And all of you know how much Umar radiallahu anhu, he was strong and huge. He just had to pull that drainage pipe to throw it away, to go back to his house. And as we know, Umar radiallahu anhu, he does not have any spare clothes. He had to wash it, wait for his clothes to dry, he wore it again, then he went back to the masjid. Imagine with me now, what time Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he left for Salat al-Jumu'ah. And this is a great problem, I see it in the Muslim ummah, even in the Western country. Most of the people, they come late for Salat al-Jumu'ah. Why? Why we know there is a great reward for coming early for Salat al-Jumu'ah, especially with all respect to the brothers who come late, especially in this country, everybody, this day, it's a day, uh, the day that they have a break. So they have no excuse 
to come late for Salat al-Jum'ah. Anyway, Umar, after he gave the khutbah, after Salat al-Jum'ah, he stood up and he said, and he stared at al-Abbas. And he said, oh al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't harm people with your drainage pipe. When I was walking next to your home, all the dirty things that come to my clothes. Then listen carefully, brothers, and I want you to open your heart and your mind to what Al-Abbas responds to Umar radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Wallahi, by the name of Allah, the one who put that drainage pipe in its place, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his own hand. The one who assembled that drainage pipe, it's the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his own hand. Then what's the response of Umar radiallahu anhu? Why he was so angry, so mad. The only response, the tears flow from his eyes. And he witnessed everybody attending Salat al-Jumu'ah. All people make sure to be my witness. I will walk now to the house of Al-Abbas. Listen carefully, brothers. I will walk with Al-Abbas to his house. And he have to climb on my back to put that vibe in its place. Karamatan lin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For honoring the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The question is, brothers, Umar, he did not hear any command from the Prophet ﷺ, do this or don't do this. This is halal or this is haram. Only he hears that the hands of the Prophet ﷺ touched that pipe. And because he took it out from its place, he cried. And he remem- remembered the Prophet ﷺ. Imagine if Umar, he heard the hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, do this or don't do that. What's the response of Umar ibn al-Khattab? And every one of us, we need to respond to this. Whenever we hear an ayah, whenever we hear a command from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever we hear a hadith, how our hearts respond to the book of Allah and to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you will find out what's happened to the Muslim ummah. What's happened to the Muslim ummah. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت اللهم ردنا والمسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم اهد قلوبنا للتوحيد واجعل آخر كلامنا من الدنيا شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله عباد الله وصلوا وسلموا على من أمركم الله بالصلاة والسلام عليه حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد في هذه الساعة المباركة واعرض عليه صلاتنا وسلامنا يا أرحم الراحمين وارض عن الخلفاء الأربع أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن بقية الصحابة يا رب العالمين وارض عنا معهم بجودك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم ردنا والمسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم احفظ هذه الديار واحفظ ديار المسلمين جميعا يا رب العالمين من كل سوء اللهم ابسط علينا رحماتك ومغفرتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اهد شباب المسلمين اللهم اهد شباب المسلمين اللهم اهد شباب المسلمين اللهم وفق المسلمين لما تحب وترضى اللهم ارفع الضائقة عن إخواننا المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عجل بنصرك لأمة حبيبك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك من كل خير سألك منه عبدك ونبيك 
محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر استعادك منه عبدك ونبيك محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين